Yeah, I started a book that was going to report how religion supports violence. More in depth I went, I found out that there were origins of religions themselves that were forged and about mythical uh, origins. Regarding violence, Deepak Chopra said that there's more violence in the name of religion than for any other reason. Well, think about it. The Crusades. The Christians arrive in Jerusalem and they burn alive the Jews and Arabs. Think about the Inquisition. It lasted over 400 years. There was a 30-year war between the Catholics and Lutherans. There's Middle East conflict right now between the Sunnis and the Shiites, and they're both Muslim. Where in the Bible, for example, does it support violence? Well, in the Old Testament, Moses commits murder of a uh, Egyptian and secretly hides the body in the sand. Moses is commanded by God to wipe out a whole nation. He is told in another place to kill all the men and women and boys, innocent children, but to reserve the women who have never uh, slept with a man and reserve that for themselves. This is God telling Moses that they should preserve the virgins for themselves. In another case, God tells Moses to not leave anything breathing, humans, animals, everything. This is from the Bible, Samuel. Numbers and Deuteronomy. Regarding Moses, Moses has all the trappings of a myth, copying the story of Sargon the Great, the king of Akkad, who was put in uh, a basket of rushes down the river and is uh, picked up by an influential woman. There's no record in history about 600,000 people leaving Egypt. It's not there. And the Egyptians kept meticulous records. I've been to Egypt. I've seen hieroglyphics all over the walls. I heard that they would make note if a silo broke in Nubia. It was recorded. There's nothing about Moses. Well, if Moses is a myth, what about Jesus? Well, by the way, Jesus was not so nonviolent as you think. He said to prevent sin, you should pluck out your eyes, cut off your noses. He said that whole villages would uh, have eternal hell because they didn't listen to his preaching. There was a man that he healed of being possessed by a devil and he took the devil from the man and projected it into 2,000 pigs and had them go over a cliff, 2,000 pigs, to uh, drown in the sea. But wait a minute, if Jesus is a myth, like Moses, who is it patterned after? 
Well, the answer is Mithra. Mithra was a Persian savior god, born of a virgin on December 25th. He was greeted by the Magi, who brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He performed miracles. He was crucified. This whole story of Jesus is a copycat of the story of Mithra, M-I-T-H-R-A. He also had 12 companions. For there are over 300 monuments and statues in Rome alone about Mithra. One, was, one shrine was found underneath the St. Paul's Cathedral. There's a beautiful statue in the Louvre of Mithra. In 325 AD, Christianity was invented based on the myth of Mithra. There were over 50 religions in Rome at the time. It was fracturing the religious and political harmony of Rome. So Constantine uh, ordered a council of Nicaea and they were going to decide what should be the surviving uh, story. And they chose Mithra as a model. Well, they decided that every other manuscript should be burned and anybody preserving it or concealing it would be beheaded. He had a companion who was a historian of sort. His name was Eusebius. Eusebius. E-U-S. E-B-I-U-S. He has been described as the most thoroughly dishonest historian of antiquity. He himself said that he wrote things that were beneficial to themselves and posterity afterwards. Edward Gibbon said that he impugned the honesty of Eusebius and his stories about the d demise of the apostles. So they collected a bunch of uh, things and they call them the New Testimonies. Eusebius is known as the father of church history. Now, all the other religions, they burned churches and temples and they focused on this one religion. It went so far as destroying the Serapeum. The Serapeum housed the great library of Alexandria. So it was uh, destroyed with the uh, commander in chief of the Egyptian troops troops, and a Christian patriarch. Historically, there are no records of Jesus Christ. Uh, according to um, Frederick Farrar of Trinity College, Cambridge, it's not possible to find any legitimate religious or historical writings compiled from the beginning of the first century and well into the fourth century. Any reference to Jesus Christ and the spectacular events that the church says accompanied him. And Farrar says, it's amazing that history has not involved to us, even one certain 
definite saying or circumstance in the life of the Savior of mankind. There's no statement in all history that says anyone saw Jesus or talked to him. Nothing in history is more astonishing than the silence of the contemporary writers about events relayed in the four Gospels. So the construct of Christianity did not begin until the first quarter of the fourth century. Even Pope Leo X called Christ a fable. That's in the Cardinal uh, Bembo's letters. And later Paul III uh, said that there's no valid document to demonstrate the existence of Christ. He confessed that Christ never existed, adding that he was none other than the Son adored in its mythic sect. Well, wait a minute. What about references by whole Roman historians about Jesus? Um, and Josephus, on Tacitus, they, his, uh, uh, his history that mentions Jesus was mysteriously found in the 15th century in a German forest after a reward was offered by Pope Leo X. Obviously, a forgery. Its authenticity, authenticity is certainly maligned. Reference in Jesus, in Joseph's history, was found to be a later addition to his writing. In other words, it was a forgery. For balance purposes, I like to say, while we're on the subject of religion, the Bible is not peaceful, the Quran is not peaceful, the Buddhists in Tibet were not peaceful, the Mormons cut their throats, said Brigham Young. A rabbi said that a million Arabs are not worth a Jewish fingernail. That's why I say a spell on all their houses. Thank you.